Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, I'm still camping or glamping at Otter Point Resort. Now I was outside, but it started raining again, so I'm back inside and I don't think anyone's gonna mind that. What I think you will mind, however, is the very first thing we're talking about, and that's Nintendo Switch emulator Fork of Yuzu, Suyu. And Suyu was on life support, and now it's officially dead. So Crimson Hawk, the person who started Suyu, posted this message today. Dear everyone, this is the founder and owner of the Suyu emulator project speaking. After careful consideration, I've decided to put the development of this project in freeze. Number one, we simply do not have the capabilities to maintain the code anymore, as most of the devs have left this project, and understandably so. Number two, and I would argue this is a big one, legal risks. Our Discord was forced to shut down due to a court order, not just a simple DMCA. This changes the situation a lot, and I am no longer willing to bear the risk of getting sued despite the name of this project. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not surprised that this happened, and I think we could all kind of see this coming. And not to say I was ever against Suyu, but Suyu seemed to be designed to give Nintendo the middle finger, and then they folded when Nintendo came after them. Now, as far as I know, the other Yuzu fork Sudachi is still alive and well. I'm not certain if their Discord was taken down due to a court order as well. I would assume it was. But at the same time here, Sudachi is still being updated and I haven't heard anything otherwise in terms of being shut down. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo 3DS emulation with Lemonade. And like Suyu, Lemonade is also dead. Now for reference, Gamer64 is the main person behind Lemonade 3DS and English is not their first language, but here's what they say. I am sorry, but I am leaving the project for a time. This community made all of my devs left and I can't do all of this alone. I feel useless now. It was a good travel, I suppose, even if it was only one month. We can still revive this project if any dev wants to join, but no one will want to. I wanted to never stop the project, but all of this drama caused it. Sorry for these unrelated people that now is affected. Now I don't want to say it's going to be all doom and gloom for all Yuzu and Citra Forks out there. But if someone is forking one of these emulators, they're probably going to have to know what they're doing in terms of development to be able to actually improve them. These are not simple emulators. They require a lot of development knowledge. So moving forward, if you see any forks of Yuzu or Citra and the main developer was never on the original development team, I would say maybe be a little bit skeptical in terms of how this emulator is going to actually pan out or at least just be patient with it. Because realistically, these emulators may be forked again and again and again. And just because they're forked doesn't mean they're gonna be actually improved upon. But moving on, and next up, we're talking about PlayStation 4 emulation with PS Off. And PS Off is improving very nicely. So Jose reports some heavy progress with PS Off emulator. Metal Gear Solid Collection goes in-game. Now this is not the first game we've seen running in PS Off. It's still technically pretty early on in development. And don't expect to see anything like Bloodborne running on it anytime soon. But it is free, it is open source, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below and feel free to check it out. And speaking about free and open source, next up we're still talking about PS4 emulation and this time with Shad PS4 and Shad PS4 is also making progress. So the creator of the video that you just saw for PS Off has put out a video for the new version of Shad PS4, version 0.0.4. I'll drop a link to Gamer RPCS3's channel in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. Now this may not be as impressive as PS Off, but this still is forward progress. Shad PS4 is still pretty early on in terms of development and all emulators have to start somewhere. Not all emulators have the luxury of starting out as a fork of an already very established emulator. Next up, we're quickly talking about Windows 11, and it appears that Microsoft has started testing ads in the Windows 11 start menu. So they say right here in a blog post, we are now trying out recommendations to help you discover great apps from the Microsoft Store under recommended on the start menu. It will be enabled by default. However, they say this can be turned off. All you have to do is turn off a toggle for show recommendations for tips, app promotions, and more. Next up, we're talking about Laka, a Linux-based retro gaming distribution. 
and Laka 5.0 has just released. So they say here it's based on Libre Elect version 11.0. RetroArch has been updated to version 1.17.0. Cores have been updated. And there's a whole bunch of new cores here, including Geolith. Mess has been updated to version 24.0.4, and this is based on Linux kernel 6.1. Laka is 100% free. It's open source. It's available for a whole bunch of different systems, including the Raspberry Pi, Orange Pi, and a whole bunch more. And the size of the image file is about 1.01 gigabytes. Next up, we're right back to PS4 emulation with FPPS4. And Temi's launcher has just released a brand new version. So at the time of filming, version 1.2.4 is the latest update. And reading this puts a massive smile on my face. Thank you for this. So it says, like one of my biggest inspirations always says, straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. So in this update, they've added in some new languages. We've got some fixes and improvements. They've updated some GUI animations, updated the minimum window size. This one is big in my opinion. They've added an option to run a launcher on Linux. And they've also added the option to select the gamepad mode, whether it's X input, SDL2, or keyboard. Temi's launcher is 100% free. It's open source and I would argue integral to the whole FPPS4 emulator. Next up, we're quickly talking about Pokemon and it appears the Poke Cops are out. So IGN is reporting that Japanese police have arrested a 36 year old man on suspicion of tampering with Pokemon Violet save data. Apparently here he was modifying it and selling it. Now if you're like me, your initial thought was, what the heck was modified? And it turns out it was for Pokemon Violet and the modification was changing Pokemon movesets. Go figure. And apparently the maximum punishment on this one is 5 years imprisonment and a fine of $32,600 approximately. I'll drop a link to this article in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. It is a very interesting read. Moving on and we're talking about Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulation with Same Boy and Same Boy just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, Same Boy version 0.16.3 is the latest update. There's bug fixes, accuracy improvements, and also new features. Now I would argue most of these new features are in regards to iOS. And they say here they've added an option to allow pressing A and B by touching the space between the two buttons on the iOS front end. This will be amazing for touchscreen. And speaking about iOS, next up we're going up one generation and talking about Game Boy Advance. And a new Game Boy Advance emulator has just popped up on the App Store. Yes, this is officially now a thing. But I will say there is a little bit of controversy surrounding this. So the app is called IGBA and it is free, but it does have ads. So Antique here, who you may recognize from the Yuzu Fork Sudachi says IGBA on the App Store is just Delta. Kind of a bad start to emulation on the App Store if people are just gonna rip off others' work and put ads into them. And someone else says, looks like it's a clone of GBA for iOS and they even added ads into the app so they profit off of it. Now, interestingly here, if I take a look at Delta, it says under GBA, it's Visual Boy Advance M. So there are a few things I'm not quite clear on right now. Unfortunately, I don't have an iPhone, I don't have iOS, and I can't check this one out myself. So at the very least here, and controversy aside, I'd argue it's very nice to see emulator apps officially on the App Store. Let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comments below. And let me know if there's a controversy here in the comments below if you have iOS. Now I'm going to take a quick break, hit the sauna, and watch the beautiful sunset. All right, back inside, got the wood stove going real nice. And the last thing we're talking about here is arguably not too nice. Apparently Ubisoft is revoking the crew from owner's libraries following the server shutdown. So it's not only making the game unplayable, they're actively removing this from people's libraries. Now we talked about the crew yesterday when people were trying to get unofficial servers up and running to make the game playable again, kind of like Pretendo for the 3DS and Wii U. So here's the reported messaging when people are trying to access the crew. 
You no longer have access to this game. Why not check this door to pursue your adventures? So arguably here, if shutting things down and making the game unplayable wasn't bad enough, stripping away the license altogether so people can't even get into the game is arguably also something else. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.